Smooth 98.1, love music, love life. It's time for me to share my musings with you on Five at Five. Let me know what your thoughts are about the musings I'm sharing. And uh, if you've got any musings of your own, please share with me. The WhatsApp number is 0809-440981 or just tweet at Smooth981. The hashtag is Five at Five. All right, so first musing. Um, I was reading about the actor Blair Underwood. Now, Blair Underwood had been married to his uh, wife for about 27 or 28 years, I think. And uh, just a few days ago, he announced that um, he was engaged to his friend of over 40 years. So it's very interesting. Uh, he split up with his wife last year. And um, it's quite interesting to know that him and this woman had been friends for 40 years before they fell in love. And I couldn't help thinking at some point, was Blair's wife uncomfortable with the relationship that he might have had with this friend? Because um, sometimes when you have a friend of the opposite gender uh, who's very close to you, sometimes partners ask questions like why is this person always around you are you sure this person doesn't like you it just got me thinking is blair's wife somewhere or ex-wife now somewhere saying i knew that there was something about this couple and isn't it funny that it took 40 whole years for them to realize that they should have been together but i mean whenever it comes it's better late than never right <laughs> congratulations <laughs> to Blair Underwood and his soon-to-be wife. Okay, so moving on to our second musing. This one has to do with um, men who uh, train young ladies in school and expect to marry them at the end of the day. Now, it's something that's popular here in Nigeria. A man, maybe in his late 20s or early 30s, uh, goes to find a young girl who's probably just fresh out of secondary school waiting to get into university and offers to pay for her tuition and at the end of four or five years you know give or take a few extra years thank you Asu um, and hopes that he'll marry her at the end of the day but is it possible that in some way these young ladies are being exploited by the men because when you think about it a girl at 18 or 19 um, probably might not be too certain of what she wants. And if her parents can't afford to pay for her education, she will accept someone who's going to pay for her education. Now, move it down a few years later, five, six years later, she's in her 20s, 25, 26. What she thought she wanted at 18 or 19 is not what she wants at 25 or 26. And I think it's sort of predatory when people do that because a young lady a young girl i'm gonna say a young girl is forced into a situation where she has no choice but to accept and then when she gets a bit older she's more educated she's learned a bit more about life she's well within her rights to say i don't want that relationship so i think that those men who specifically go after very young girls and try to lure them with promises of an education and all, perhaps need to go for older women, maybe 25 or 26, who already know what they want in life. It can't be that different. I mean, and some of those men have sown their wild oats, they've lived their lives, but it does seem like the young girls who are trapped into those situations don't get the best part of it best part of it just saying though let me know what you think do you think it's okay for a man to basically buy a girl's affections well with money and force her to stay with him just because he is it's kind of like it's almost like grooming in some way right well anyway let me know what your thoughts are about that that's just what i think though and that's how i see it so moving on to the third musing this one has to do with animals in zoos. So I saw a video of an orangutan at a zoo. I really don't like zoos. I feel like animals shouldn't be enclosed in those kind of spaces, particularly the ones with metal bars. So nature reserves where they can wander around, that's different. But zoos where it feels like they're in cages and they're just staring at people, it's almost depressing to see. But anyways, um, 
this orangutan was in its enclosure at the zoo and someone probably one of the vistas had a pair of glasses that fell in sunglasses and it was so interesting to see this animal pick up the glasses and wear them with the little baby really little cute baby orangutan just hanging out and trying to touch the glasses as well as well it just reminded me of you know when a mother gets something new and she's admiring it and the little child is like oh i want to see i want to see but it was interesting that the orangutan knew exactly what to do with the glasses how to wear it because well they've been watching the humans around them and uh, it was just a moment that i really enjoyed watching apart from you know being enclosed of course but it was very interesting and that just goes to show that if animals can pick up on the behaviors of people around them think about how easy it is for children to pick up on the behaviors of people around them as well the way they talk the kind of words they use how they act it's just like a sponge soaking up everything so if animals have that ability to soak up what they observe from human beings think about how easy it is for a child to soak up the wrong things just saying and uh, moving on to the fourth musing this one has to do with um, the wildlife experts now back in the day it was steve irwin he was a big big guy when it came to wildlife the croc hunter that was what he was called and um, he'd dive on snakes wrestle with crocodiles he tragically lost his life you know when a stingray attacked him another animal but i like that he made wildlife and exploring that area of life very interesting but i find that a lot of the wildlife experts on social media right now i think they are very extra um they're wearing tiger skin pants trying to look like tarzan <laughs> it's almost comical really and i'm thinking yes you're living among these wild animals you're taking care of them, you're showing them love, but do you need to tie a little piece of loincloth in zebra skin or tiger skin? I find that bit really, really ridiculous and um, yeah, almost movie-like. But um, I, I don't know. It's like there's one Tarzan and it's not like he's a real human. So yeah, let us get interested in wildlife without the extras, just saying though. Final musing, I saw something on social media a few days ago and it was a post that says um, there's a difference between being sad and being a sad person. And I really pondered about it. Um, in life, we go through ups and downs. There are times that we feel sad and it's okay to feel sad sometimes, you know. But what is not okay is when a person is determined to be permanently sad. You know, some people... Um, they wake up and they're looking for, I don't know, something that paints them in a way that they are a victim. So a sad person, yes, people can go through moments where they're sad, but a sad person is subconsciously determined to be sad, right? <laughs> so they wake up every other day and they are miserable and it just doesn't end with them sometimes they project that energy to the people around them as well and people start to pull away from them because no one really wants to be around negative energy life is hard enough as it is so who really wants to be around someone who is permanently disgruntled and sad so um yes it's okay to be sad it's a normal human emotion like every other but when that sadness becomes something that a person wears like a badge or a crown Oh, that's the moment where it's become a problem so yes i agree with that post there's definitely a, a difference between being sad and being a sad person well that's it for the musings let me know what your thoughts are 0809 that's the whatsapp number and of course we are on twitter as well as smooth 981 Care actor, writer, and you're listening to Smooth 98.1. Keep listening.